going. Just bear with me one second here. Does that mean we can start? Just give me one second. Okay. Okay, Dave, you may go ahead. Okay. Thanks for uh, showing up people to our last meeting uh, for this term. Just to clarify for folks, we agreed to do it this week because uh, the clerk's office says we are required to end in our October meeting. Our mandate is up on November 14th um, because the new mandate will kick in and there is no meeting there. And the October, we the clerk's office asked for a favor. They asked us to uh, end in September if we could because they're all hands on deck for the election. And we agreed at the last meeting. So in case that didn't get through, um, that's why we're meeting at this point. Um, Tammy, could I ask just to uh, to let Jamie do his thing? I know that it's out of order, but can we do the Global Perspectives Party Youth Ambassadors first, please, so they can go to the game? And, and uh, I mean, he's going to have such a disappointment later tonight <laughs> as the game progresses. I, I, I feel we should at least be positive now. As long as the committee's in agreement with that, that should be no problem. Does anybody care? No. All right. Jamie, talk to us about uh, Global Perspectives. Okay. Uh, we are a go as of Thursday. Jeff and I are off to pick the Germans up uh, in the airport, and then they're going to be here on the 29th. They're here for four weeks to the day. Um, 26 kids. And David, we just got another application for our program just the other day, late one. So we'll be, uh, be able to match them, 26 kids and uh, our guys. There is going to be, I think, David, you might be able to help me on this one, a, um, a goodbye party that uh, yes. we'll make available. To, uh, I'm not sure about the date, but we'll make available to all members of the IRC if they would like to attend. There is a and goodbye party. It's going to be at Innisdale. Jeff sent me the information. I'll bring that up uh, as soon as I as soon as I find it. Um, I'm gonna while we're on this. Are you done with for the moment, Jamie? Yep. So while we're on global, I have a couple motions. So I'm gonna pass the uh, I'm gonna pass the chair to Mark, if I may. Yeah. In order to present these two motions, and to let you know in advance, people, they're fairly standard motions that we've done in the past. So I'll be looking for seconders for these first two. Um, the first one, and I've divided them for reasons, if anyone cares, I'll explain. Um, the first one, uh, that IRC authorized the Global Perspective Program to expand, expend up to $5,000 to help offset the hosting costs of the Zweibrook and Youth Delegation arriving Thursday. We have done this in the past. It's mostly about the goodbye party. So that motion again, that IRC authorizes the Global Perspectives Program to expend up to $5,000 to help offset the housing costs of the Zweibrook and Youth Delegation arriving Thursday. Can I have a sec? I'm moving it. Who's sec? Can I have a seconder? I see Lou. Oh, sorry, Mark. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. That's all right. <laughs> yeah. All right. That will not be the last time I screw that up. All right. All right. Any, Any discussion? All in favor? All right. Great. Unanimously. Thank you. I have a second one, Mr. Chair. Uh, go ahead, Dave. That IRC pay the two invoices from Hammond Coach Lines in the full amount of $4,746. I'm moving it. Needs a second. Uh, seconder, please. This is this is to bring the, uh, the Germans uh, from the airport and then back at the end. No, excuse me, if oh. I can correct that. This is yep. uh, this is to reflect what we've done in the past um, with uh, the two coach lines for the long trips, the Niagara uh, Falls and Stratford one. Apologies. And we and this is not new. We have done this. We've done yep. this like for twenty years. Yep. Seconder, Rob. Uh, any discussion? Clarification. All in favor? Passed unanimously. Good. And okay, while I'll pass I, it back to you, Dave. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, and while I have you, um, oh, here I go again. Um, so there is going to be a goodbye party. I would ask you people, um, yeah, 
he doesn't give me a date. Maybe it's not finalized yet. Uh, so there will be a goodbye party. I will uh, send an email to all of you with that date once I finally get it. Um, it will, it's going to be held at the Innisdale CAF. Now the COVID's over, we can get back on schedule with that. You're all invited, um, but you, but if we would greatly appreciate, I would greatly appreciate it once we have the actual date and time, um, I'll send that out. And if you could reply at that point, whether you're, you're available to come, I would greatly appreciate that uh, so that we can have the numbers in advance. So I'm sorry. And I, I just want to, I just want to add to Dave, like the goodbye party is, is quite amazing. The kids put on a performance and it's worthwhile attending just to see what these kids put on and, and they perform, they dance, they sing. And it, it's truly wonderful, wonderful to see our youth doing what they do at their best. So I, I really encourage you to come out and see these guys, what they do. It, it truly is amazing. So thanks. And I'll just add that I hope that's part of the schedule. I mean, it's been three years since we've done this. So who actually knows uh, exactly what the Germans have planned, but it's always a good time for everybody anyway. So if you can, that'd be greatly appreciated. Okay. We'll do our best on our end. All right. Perfect. Um, is there anything else on, about global? Okay. Um, so just give me two seconds. What's next? Uh, actually, you can, is, is, has Shannon joined us yet? No, no, she's not. All right. So we'll come back. She's not here yet or she's not. No, coming? she's not in, in attendance yet. Okay, so let's leave the rest of youth ambassadors for the moment, um, and uh, we, we can we can come back to it with the committees with the committee's agreement. Um, I have another motion, but what's up next? Uh, it was the committee budget update. Okay, that's Which, you. Okay, so I've received. We um, uh, there was a bunch of invoices submitted recently for um, the German delegation that was here they've just been submitted so the committee has uh let me just see here it was twelve thousand and three hundred and some dollars that has come out of the budget so far and i think the expenditures were seventeen thousand. that's still to come out that included these bus receipts that you guys just passed the motion for so and that was it okay and what that means is that at this point <laughs> at this, sorry uh Jamie is busy texting me in the midst of all this. Um, apparently, even with those, uh, we basically have seven thousand, just under eight thousand dollars left in our budget after the buses have been paid. So that bus motion, um, if you if you don't do any of this, you might want to be on top of it for the future. Um, bus lines are now demanding payment in advance rather than the submission of an invoice. And that has because caused us some chaos uh, over the last uh, couple of weeks as we tried to sort that out. Um, so Tammy worked with me to provide the money in advance for Hammond. Um, but um, the we, we worked through it and, and we're going to get past it. I'm just saying why that's already been included in that. But it doesn't include the up to 5,000. And the, by the way, the 5,000 is going to be well below that. I mean, it's one of our usual things. So uh, we're going to have a couple thousand dollars left at the end of the budget because everything's been submitted. Nobody is, I've asked a number of occasions and no one has gotten back to me beyond Jean-Marie uh, closing out the, uh, the German, um, uh, the, the German um, adult and, and citizen group. Um, so... With that in mind, I have a motion that can either come now or under legacy. Why don't I do it now? Mark, you got the chair again. Yeah, yeah. Dave, you have a, a motion for the legacy fund update. I do. Um, that at the end of this, be it resolved that at the end of this budget year, any and all unallocated budget monies be donated as a one-time grant to the Youth Ambassadors Legacy Fund in light of their efforts to restart their fundraising campaign halted due to COVID, I move it. Someone will second it, and I will. I'll second it. That's Tina. Tina. May I speak to it, Mark? Yes, please. So this is very unusual, people, and I'd like to talk about it just very, very briefly. Um, so as you know, um, a number of years ago, we had some money left, and we anticipated um, uh, some expenditures coming up and down the road, and it's going to hit like crazy in the, over the next little while. 
and we created a reserve fund. And for reasons that we don't need to rehash this evening, that reserve fund was capped <clears throat> at twenty thousand dollars. That's that's full. So the money that is going to be left over, like with most uh, all of these things dealing with government agencies or government anything, is that the money simply goes back into into general government. Um, in this situation, though, I think we have an opportunity. Global, the, the legacy fund, which we know is designed in order to provide for those uh, students in the future or youth in the future that are coming from financially challenged uh, families, it provides them an opportunity because we've always argued that we take the best kids, not the richest kids. And that has been one of our, our main focal points in all of it. We shut that down. Uh, because obviously no one's going to give money for essentially a cultural immersion travel program when no one's allowed to travel with COVID. We're starting that back up. There is there. I think there's, I don't have the number. Actually, I do have the number in front of me. We have uh, 39,000 and change already raised back from just a couple months in this. Um, the goal is to, to get it up over a hundred thousand is 150 if we can. However, the COVID has also left a number of people scrambling a little bit with inflationary costs. As Jeff Tool can tell you, um, and Jamie probably is aware of it too, in booking our buses, a bus cost um, that was $6,000 three years ago for the big trip uh, that the Germans are paying for, thank God they're paying for it, is now well over $10,000. The big trip that cost us 12, didn't, that cost them $12,000 three years ago is going to cost them 20 this year. We've seen it on the other side. There are already uh, three or four submissions for um, students asking for assistance. And so we're biting into the legacy fund before we actually even have it properly invested. So when I saw that this money was going to be left over, I, I thought, you know what, why not make a statement about, about what we believe in? So I, would understand that this is new. This is not something we've done before, but it seems to me to be something that serves a useful, uh, useful purpose for that money that is essentially IRCs, anyways. So those are my comments, Mr. Chair. Back to you. And I'm, I will answer any questions. Any other discussion on this, Bill? Uh, unmute. Yeah, just a quick question. We're using now public funds, and is the legacy fund public, or is it considered private funds? Well, they're public funds because they're controlled through the city of Barrie. All right. So, like, for instance, if you were to make a donation to this uh, by check, I mean, you can mm -hmm. just press the button and do all that. But, but it's, uh, it's through the, the, the check. Anyone writing a check to this, such as we've had a number of families that have written, not a number, we've had two families that have written more than a few, like more than a thousand bucks or whatever. And they've written checks and the check they wrote was to the city of Barry youth ambassadors. All right. right. Which makes it public money in that sense. And, and, the, and the government, and it's the, the contract with, um, with the Barry community foundation who is doing the investing, the contract is with the city of Barry. It's not with um, youth ambassadors. So basically you've got apples and apples that we're using here. Yes. Yeah. All right. Once once the money is donated, it and it's it's city money. But to be fair, it's city money designated for a specific purpose that the city can't touch. Yeah. Right. Like, I mean, ultimately, the city, the city, it's it goes to the city, but the city can't touch it except for the purposes of the yeah. legacy fund, and that's all in the legal agreement. All right. And well, we just as long we as just above board. Yep. Well, we I just signed a, a, a new yeah. agreement this summer. It's a fairly substantial contract. So right. like everything is, is managed properly. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. Any more discussion? All in favor? Passed. Okay, great. All right. Th thank you for doing that, Mark. And thank you for the support committee members. Um, What's next, uh, Tammy? Uh, the International Partners website. Okay, Kieran's unable to be here with us. Unfortunately, he forgot that it was the last end of September and he'd made a commitment to another uh, organization at Queens that he's uh, running or involved with or whatever. Jamie, that's your cue. 
Shannon's joined us, so thank you. Okay. Jamie's bailing so he can go watch Judge Hurt himself. And uh, um, and now we still have quorum. So um, anyway, he just basically wanted me to tell you two things. First of all, um, he has sent out thank yous. Uh, I'm not saying he sent out notices to the people that made suggestions for the web um, in, in terms of a, most especially to um, Mr. Rudichuk dealing with the, the cameras uh, so that there are pictures of, of our downtown and our waterfront that are kind of like an ongoing stream. Um, and just to basically say thank you for the suggestion and moving on. So that's now up and running. And he sent uh, he sent notes out to, to not just uh, Mr. Rudicek, but a couple other people that had made a couple other suggestions that were incorporated. So that's good PR. Um, and the other thing is that he wanted me to remind you, Mark, that, um, or Tammy, when the, turn, when the uh, changeover is made, uh, into the new mandate, he's going to need guidance on a bunch of changes in terms of who's running what committee and all the rest of that stuff. Okay. And I think that was all that he, and he obviously sends his apologies. And I think, I think, I think, I think, um, um, ba -ba -ba. yeah, I'm just reading his, And uh, yeah, that's basically it. He's been doing some stuff with Shannon, but she'll choose to explain the progress or leave it as is when the time comes. All right. Okay. Tammy. Uh, Maria, I'm in Japan. Okay. So everything is, uh, as we discussed last meeting, um, we are anticipating receiving a citizens group in July around the uh, Canada Day weekend. And uh, we will be sending uh, students uh, our first trip to uh, Japan of, of Barry students. So I would think that uh, Hiromi and, and Shannon in the next month will get together um, and, and start putting the plans together for, uh, for uh, uh, getting everything going, uh, you know, selecting students uh, uh, for the trip to Japan and, and then coordinating how we want to. Uh, receive our guests for, and, and start putting an itinerary together. Sounds good, Mark. But to that end, you should be aware that that'll probably have to be at least in part a Zoom meeting. Um, yes. Because I know that uh, not everybody that you just mentioned is going to be available in country in Barrie yeah. uh, whenever, that, whenever that happens. So. I understand. But I, I think sooner than later uh, within the, in October, we'll get together at some point, whether it be Zoom or personally, and uh, oh, okay. at least get the groundwork set and, and get rolling for the, it's, it's going to be a great year. So it's perfect. Um, Tammy, can we move back and finish up Youth Ambassadors, please? Yes, you can. Just, yeah. Well, I just yeah. saw that Shannon's arrived, so we should yes, probably you can her... go finish that up if you want. Okay. Shannon, talk to us about Youth Ambassadors. Yes, I apologize for my tardiness. Red Cross and Hurricane Fiona are uh, a lot of fun right now. So I <laughs> apologize. Um, yeah, Youth Ambassador stuff. So I don't know if Dave filled you in on the, the hopes that we were having with the Moving Arts Center and the Aras. Um, no. <laughs> oh, my God, the Harrogate Exchange. Sorry, I'm all mixed up right now. Uh, is unfortunately not a go. Uh, Moving Arts has declined uh, to participate in that exchange. So we will be down that one exchange, which is unfortunate. Um, other things that we are... Um, Moving forward on, Kieran, as you said, is not here today, but he and I are, have been working on updating the flyer for the Youth Ambassador Program. And while it's not complete, I thought I would just give a little share screen so you guys can see how nice it's coming along. And we're very excited. Um, he's been working really hard to uh, to put this in place uh, and we're trying to get it ready and printed before October 1st. So there will be some few things, but this is page one. I still have a couple of adjustments to make on it. And here is page two, sample two there. We have two different pictures, but um, the idea is that we've uh, got a flyer to use uh, because uh, Kenta is has been invited to cultural days at the library and he would like to be able to talk about the Japan opportunity um, there. So we're trying to get a few things in order so that we can work through that. Um, I also have Kieran working with uh, the City of Barrie web tech people. Um, one, I'd like to look at a way to do the student selection in an electronic manner um, rather than, um, you know, a, a 
like more of a fillable form. So we're investigating a couple of those options so that we can get started on the student selection. And then maybe that will become an opportunity to use the same method with global and whoever else. Um, the other thing is, is I have the bookmarks. I know I have the bookmarks um, given some to a few of you, but I would like to distribute them to all of you at some point somehow, or if we can have them set up at City Hall for pickup, if you'd like to pick up your package, I can set up packages at City Hall for pickup. But the one thing I did want to ask is if we can make a purchase of more bookmarks before the end of this year. And I'm hoping that we can have I'm moving a motion or whatever. I don't know how to call it, but to, to be able to purchase more of the bookmarks and it might be more specific so that we have some bookmarks for all the libraries and the places we want to use them for, but also for gifts for, the, uh, you know, the, the Japanese uh, and uh, visitors and German visitors and all of that kind of stuff, just to have a couple extras on hand. I don't know how this works. So quick question. Yeah. How many before, you, I mean, before you put the motion on the floor, how many do we have already? So we had um, 500. So, Wait. yeah. So how no. many, 500 each or 500 of 500 total? I have too many numbers in my head right now. I think it's 500 each. And I was giving everyone in the group 25 of each and then distributing them to the three main libraries and then the gifts. So I think we're going to go through that 500 pretty quickly because City Hall also has a chunk in display on the floor. Could I make a recommendation? Just I, I appreciate your enthusiasm, but perhaps you weren't here for this. We basically allocated the rest of this year's budget. Could oh, okay. not wait till next year's budget. It, next year's budget will be done in January, right? Okay. So this year there's no, there's no money left like it's not something we would like to use it up before we don't have it for next year with many exchanges possibly we just passed a motion for okay. money monies that were left to be donated on a, as a startup basis for the legacy fund ah okay good there we go we're not mm -hmm. going to run out of them during it's this not year. it's not like it's crazy expensive it was like you know a couple hundred bucks so and we can move it to next year perfect yeah okay i mean we're okay. not going to run out of them this year lionel um, in regards to the 25 per person, wouldn't it be better if we just reduce that amount and reallocate the other quantities to the libraries? Because yeah, at 25 per person, you're giving a couple hundred pieces away to us. And I think the, the unsaid part of what he's saying is we may not feel that we have people to give them to. Like, we're not sure what to do with them. I, I don't have any friends. And that's so true, Lionel. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we but we trust Irene to have many friends and to, to handle all of that. So mm -hmm. anyway, that's per, certainly you can do that. You can give them back to uh, to Shannon or back to City Hall and do that same process that works. OK. Anything else? You I, don't think, I don't think there's anything else on my okay. side. Sorry. Barry. Barry. Uh, Shannon, just we saw that briefly, the brochure. And the thing that jumped out at me was it said, um, applicants must be taxpayers in the city of Barrie. I just don't like the word taxpayers. I don't know if you can change things, but residents or something, it just, <laughs> just, my health's getting the love. Um, it just, I kind of worry that some people are going to say, geez, we're renting an apartment here. I mean, we're not taxpayers in the city of Barrie. I, I don't know. That's just a term that I worry some people will think they're not eligible. Okay. But so it's, I'm going to take this, Shannon, because I'm the one that invented the word tax, didn't invent the word, but I invented the use of the word taxpayer. The problem we have is that we used to, and we still probably will go through the schools, all right, to, to access a lot of this. And virtually every school in Barrie has a whole number, a whole bunch of kids that are coming from outside Barrie. And however enthusiastic they might be, we walk that tightrope with Global because we need to maintain the partnership with the school board. But... I have a, I mean, if you can find a different word, all right. Um, what about residents? Must be but, a resident. Yeah, but but here's the problem with that. Um, I remember the very, I tried something like that earlier in the very first, we did say residents back once upon a time. And uh, Bernie and Heather still in 1997 were on me within like the first day it came out saying, what does this mean? I mean, we want Sean to be, want Sean to apply but we live outside the city resident, the city of Barrie. And I said, well, then and he says, yeah, but I own 20 buildings in town and pay more in taxes to the city 
than many other people do. And so it was at that point, working through council and advising on that, that we decided to use the word taxpayer. I understand your concern and I don't disagree with it, but the word, the word resident created a problem for people that were business owners that live outside the boundaries, who have kids that, that want to go. Maybe just resident or taxpayers? Okay, so you're, you're working on the assumption that pe people that, that, that rent apartments are, aren't going to know that their rental includes paying taxes. I think there's a good chance or they're going to think I'm not a taxpayer in the city of Barrie. That's my worry anyways. Maybe it's, maybe it's baseless, but. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll mull it over for sure, Barry. Yeah, Actually, I don't, dis I don't disagree with what he suggested. Yeah. I mean, just yeah. add resident and or a taxpayer. Yeah. That's what works just as fine. Okay, All right, that works. I mean, it's adding one word. So thanks, Barry. We can resolve that. All right. Uh, I think that's it for youth ambassadors at the moment. Uh, what's next, Tammy? Tammy? See, with no pictures, sorry. Tammy's gone out for lunch. All right. I'm here. <laughs> German twinning, sorry. Okay, John Maurice. So the uh, German group, or the majority of them left on the 14th of September and the last two out of quarantine uh, <laughs> left on the 22nd of September. So we had a, a number of issues with uh, COVID and uh, testing, but all in all, no one was uh, seriously ill. But um, we had some uh, some issues with this uh, arrive can and the uh, random testing from the Canadian government, um, and then being told to uh, <clears throat> to go to um, a test center outside of the Pearson Airport, only to be uh, informed that uh, yeah, I'd never cancel our last. Uh, it's the long weekend, so we're not open anyway. So uh, go and find yourself a shopper's drug mart someplace in the province, and then. Uh, you can get your tests done, but um, we persevered. We got through it, and uh, yeah, it was a positive uh, exchange. Uh, the um, Lord Mayor uh, Marald Wasnitsa met with uh, our mayor Dave. You hosted the group, so you know who was here. Um, very successful on the sixth of uh, September. The dedication of the bench at the South Shore Community Center. A major exercise in the afternoon involving the military attaché from the Federal Republic uh, here in Barrie and the press and culture attaché from the consulate in Toronto. And then, of course, the, um, the uh, church service uh, concert at Westside Lutheran on the night of the 6th. So, um, yeah, uh, don't have much more to say. I'll try and get some pictures posted, but... Um, uh, and all, all, all the books are closed on the on the visit. Um, I sent all that off, uh, and so some of the money that's been voted to go to the legacy fund is monies that weren't spent on the uh, on the German twinning. So that's my report. Thanks, John Maurice. And I just want to add, I think, on behalf of all of us, that you know what? God bless you. You do an amazing job. And not only would the Zweibrook and Partnership not exist without you. But you've also surrounded yourself with some extraordinarily talented people like Bill, like Bunty, like a number of others. Um, and you've done a great job and you continue to do a brilliant job. So uh, thank you uh, for everything that you've done uh, throughout this. Um, it's greatly appreciated, more so than perhaps you understand. So kudos. Tammy, next. Uh, Harold Gate, please. New? Do you have anything new on the uh, rugby side? Uh, we had a scheduled Zoom meeting at noon today, but our main contact with the rugby over there yeah. had to bail. So we have rescheduled it for next Monday. He does, however, have a report that they have... Um, excited interest and there you have at least 20 to 25 players who want to come and apparently the parents want to come so <laughs> that's a hurdle we have to to discuss at our next zoom meeting in in a week and um barry rugby um our contact there is in favor of youth traveling without their parents 
to get the true experience of an exchange. So we have some some discussions to be had, and I've um, I've sent on to Michael and, and to Mark Garrett as well that perhaps all these rugby parents might be interested in, in a citizen exchange in the future. So there's some things to, to work through for sure. But bottom line, we do have an under 16 rugby team of 20 to 25 players plus their coaches coming sometimes in um, the summer of 2023 after July 23rd. Sounds great. Thirsty, thank you for all that. Sorry, Shannon, do you have a question or are you waving your hand? It's not, okay. Bill? No more. No. Any more? Okay. Uh, just to reiterate what Shannon said, I'm really sorry that moving arts didn't happen. Multiple meetings. The last time Shannon and I were there, literally a couple of weeks ago, they seemed super keen when we left. And then, it's all, I mean, they didn't tell us why. They just told us they, they uh, were not going to do it. So I don't know what happened with that. They did suggest the Kempenfeld Community Players, um, which is an organization that Julie Underhill is heavily involved with. I've looked them up online. I'll talk to Julie when she gets back from the cottage or whatever. Um, Julie is a person I taught with for years. She was retired as a principal about two years ago, and and she's very involved in, in the arts, music, and that type of thing. So I'll talk to her. But I mean, the nice part about it is it's not nice that they're not going, but it's nice that we can now spread it out. I have to admit, I was a little concerned about doing sort of a double whammy uh, in the same year. So, however, and I'm sure we'll be doing more stuff. And Rick and Lou are doing a great job with that. And thank you for all of your efforts on that. I know the rugby thing will be awesome. Uh, Tammy, what's next? Arras, France. So, um, I, so the, the, uh, we really have nothing to report. I mean, I, 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 <laughs> well, <laughs> no, I appreciate it. Well, it's just, there's a couple things that are in the works. Nothing's developed yet. Um, the, the, uh, the associate director of education, who's rumored to be the next full director when the, when the other guy retires has kids in the global program. And I happened to see her at a meeting and suggested that I needed to talk. And she said, give her a call. And none of that has happened yet. So uh, the idea would be, and I've mentioned it before, is that we would run one of two things, either an ongoing history trip, because grade 10 history is when they teach the two world wars, uh, which would give kids a chance to go to Arras and to Vimy and to Juneau Beach and et cetera, et cetera. Or to use, we have a very extensive and very successful uh, French immersion program. And the, the other alternative would be to take the French immersion kids. So same type of thing. Ross is still super keen. And Mark, you have a guy that's in Montreal or something, don't you? Exactly. Uh, uh, Arnaud, who's going to be very key to our uh, uh, growing relationship, is going to be uh, coming to Montreal on the 26th. I've uh, emailed back and forth. He's just putting his itinerary together. And as soon as I know the dates, uh, we are making every effort to get him to Barry. I'm not positive. Um, <laughs> since it's the 27th already I'm assuming we're talking October 26th October yes October and he's coming till about the 15th of November so um, I'm just waiting for his uh, uh, his plans but uh, we're in regular contact uh, their rugby guy I've been in touch with him too <laughs> uh, there's there's actually a lot of excitement going on with Brass and, their cool. and, if, he, and if he can't make it here we're still doing a road trip right you got her. Yeah. <laughs> One way or another, we're getting right. together. They, they were amazing hosts and, uh, uh, you know, the time is right to, to nurture this relationship. So very cool. Okay. Um, what's next, Tammy? Uh, the Sir Robert Berry project. And there's no report. Thanks. And that's it. No, I've got, uh, two other things. The first thing I want to tell people about is that Mark and I have worked on, some minor IRC mandate changes that are being submitted to the clerk's office. Um, we think they're fairly straightforward. I had a conversation with Jean-Maurice and he agreed that um, to streamline things a little bit and really to deal with a quota, the, the idea of quorum, um, that we would eliminate the German Canadian club's uh, position. Um, there, there's, there's 
the Zawai Brooklyn subcommittee has three positions, uh, voting positions here, and the German Canadian Club, um, as wonderful they were in the in the in the startup to it, have been less than active in the last little while. And we haven't actually had an appointee there for quite some time. The second thing we're doing is, uh, and you can all laugh if you want, but none of this would have happened without Janice Lakin. And although she has not attended for the last, last while, um, I would like to create a permanent non-voting honorary position for Janice. It's really just showing respect. It, 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 it's, to me, it's a no brainer. Um, the third thing is that we're going to create a seat for the legacy fund. Um, partly, uh, there's, there's two main reasons. One is it maintains some degree of oversight. Um, and Bill just pointed out a perfect example of why, that, why that's necessary. It also ensures that whomever takes that seat, and it'll probably be me in the early going, I mean, until, until this gets up and going and is well established and has other people engaged on its board. Um, the reality is, Someone that, that, that is permanently aware of what the legacy fund is therefore needs to be on IRC so that if Keeners in other um, that join us, I mean, it's not always going to be Jamie and, and Shannon, they understand the process, but we need to make sure that everybody understands that the legacy fund is for a specific purpose and only that purpose. And we don't want somebody new that's got some grand expenditure they want to make for something that might be wonderful for youth, but the legacy fund is not a pot uh, for people to use for other reasons. So it provides two levels of control, oversight and, um, and control. And the final part of it is, and this may not make, I almost left it off, but you should be aware of it. We're, we're going to formalize the appointment process to ensure that the approved mandate actually lines up with the clerk, to, the clerk department's current understanding. So we were told um, when um, we filled the vacancy with Jean, with um, Rob, Rob Warman's uh, vacancy on, on Zweibrook, and we were informed by, by the clerk that we didn't need to, to submit the name to council. And in fact, when Mark and I were going through the mandate, in fact, we did. We were supposed to. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm fine with, all, with, with the way the clerk wanted to do it. I'm just saying the mandate has to line up with the instructions. Otherwise, it just doesn't make sense. So we're just going to clean that up. Okay. Um, are there any questions or any other concerns that anybody might have had about the mandate? Anything? It's sort of a technical document, but it's just a way of, of troubleshooting and making sure that we have everything we need and that we want. All right, good. And I think that's it. I have one last thing. Does anybody else have anything else that they wish to bring up? Yes, Mark. I just, I just saw that Leslie uh, joined the call here. And I just want to do a shout out. Uh, uh, when the Germans were here, we had a day uh, just with the official delegation. And one of the stops was at Georgian College. And I don't know how to express my gratitude to Leslie and her team, but it was absolutely outstanding to the point where the Lord Mayor changed his itinerary the next day to re-meet at Georgian College, and they've already got uh, some new visits and some activity planned in the works. And as as uh, as Marl, uh, the, the, uh, the mayor, expressed, he said, "Mark, think you got to understand. This is what I came here for. The tourist stuff's okay, but for me, I needed to get something out of it." And that was the day. So Leslie, hats off to you. She brought in deans, and I'm telling you. Uh, we went to the Indigenous Center. It was just truly an outstanding day. And Leslie, I, again, I just can't say thanks enough for what you provided on that, that event. Oh, thanks, Mark. No, it was a pleasure to host, as it always is. And, uh, you know, pleasure to get to know the mayor better and to discover that, you know, he is an attachment to the post-secondary institutions there. And, you know, I've always, you know, wanted to make something work with the Twinning City too. So, you know, we had a chance to reconnect the day after and talk more about it. And uh, as I'm going over uh, in October, I'm actually hoping to stop in Zybrook and uh, on my way back from a conference um, to meet both the, the heads of the two schools of the city. So if it's not gonna happen this trip, uh, it'll definitely happen in the near future. So very excited about all that and the connection we made. So, you know, thanks for involving Georgian and 
and uh, allowing us to play that part. Sorry about being late. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad we got the opportunity to acknowledge the visit. And I'll thank you, since this is our last meeting, I'll thank you in advance um, because you're about to do a slightly different type of thing, but Georgian has opened its doors to the German students as you always have for more than 20 years now. Um, and we're always appreciative of that. So I'll give you the thank you before it happens because we won't be meeting again during this term. So uh, at any rate, I echo what Mark has said. You guys have, do, have been fully supportive of us for many years. It's and if there's, nothing, if there's nothing else, I want to take two minutes um, basically to say thank you and goodbye. Um, I have been chair of this committee for a very long time. Um, I was trying to figure it out. It's close to, if not 25 years, you've all tolerated me. Some of you have been here since the very beginning. Some of you have been on it and gone off of it and come back. Um, <laughs> at any rate, you've, you've tolerated my smart aleck approach on occasion and all of that uh, unprofessional approach, I guess. But together, we've got things done. And uh, I really appreciate the support that you guys have, have shown me over the years. I also want to say that, that I believe we do incredible work. I think we do important work. I think we do phenomenal things, everything from cultural immersion and anti-discrimination concepts all the way through to the idea of building friendships, economic relationships, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm also bright enough to recognize that I might be keen, but none of this happens without you guys. So for all that, sometimes it can be difficult to explain our silo system, as I've nicknamed it, with the different subcommittees. Fact is we all help each other regardless of what's going on anyways. Um, so I, I thank you for everything that you've done. Um, as you all know, we've talked about before, I will not, I don't live in Barry. I will not be on the, ch uh, in the chair next, uh, uh, next term. And, uh, when, when the elections are over and we're told by the clerk's office that it's time to, uh, reorganize this, we'll hold a meeting and select the next chair. And I will, if we get the mandate approved, which I suspect we will, I'll be simply sitting there as a, uh, as the legacy chair and, learning how to be quietly a positive member. All right. <laughs> Hopefully, you know, an old dog learning new tricks. At any rate, <laughs> you guys have been fantastic. And uh, I, and the last thing I'll say, and this is going to sound weird, but I retired a decade ago. I love teaching. I love global. I love what I'm doing, blah, blah, blah. But I was ready to leave all the different things that I've left. I just know myself. I am really going to miss being engaged in international at the level that I am, uh, that I have been in the past. Um, so Mark, let me say it here publicly, if I can ever be of assistance, I promise not to interfere. I promise to literally keep my mouth shut as best I can. But I also want you to know that if I can help in any way with any of the silos, I'll be happy to do that. So thank you very much. And on that note, vote for the love of God, vote in the upcoming municipal elections and, uh, We'll see you down the road. All right. Corey, before you go, I okay. just, and I'm not, I don't mean to steal any uh, thunder off of Mark, but Mar Rob and I have only been involved in this committee for a few years. And, um, and before that with the, with our kids in global, and it makes a huge difference to this community, what you started with both global and this, and this committee. So I just want to say thank you for, for your uh, foresight in starting this program and um, and your drive to make it work. I'm sure you hit roadblocks along the way. Um, some of them probably seemed insurmountable, but somehow over the 25 years you've been doing this, you managed to keep this program going and growing. And I think it's a wonderful exchange. I think, I think it's, it makes this community so much better to live in. So thank you for what you've done for this group. Thank you very much, Tina. Although I need to correct one thing. I did not start international relations. Not, yeah, this, we can, but you we were. Can thank, we can thank uh, Jean-Maurice Pigeon, Rob mm -hmm. Warman, and Janice Laking. They were the ones that put this together before, before I became involved. And I'm sure there were others on whose names have been left out. But uh, the bottom line is, um, I just wanted to, to point that out. But thank you. Very kind comments. And I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed them. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else? Oh. Do you have a hand up or are you waving goodbye, Liz? I, no, I for one am going to 
appreciate the fact that you're not leaving, leaving, leaving. Because okay. <laughs> I, I know I will be coming to you for questions and answers. And I appreciate that the knowledge that you have to share. And thank you for everything you've done. Yeah, As I said, I'm very, very pleased to have done it. And I'm happy to help wherever. Let's just make sure that we also copy, copy the next chair on all of this moving forward. So it's all right. good. <laughs> it's all good. We're going to give them a hard time, Maury. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We are actually, we can continue. We can continue congratulating me for 10 more minutes if you want, or we can get ready for the ball game. Yeah, I don't care what they said. <laughs> All Let's right, get Jamie yep. back for the ball game. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. We're done. Take care. All right, guys. Bye. Bye, -bye. Bye. Bye everyone. Thanks to